Well, it's Monday morning. Um, we had an absolute fantastic week last week. Um, I'm not going big on the holidays. I love the season, I guess, but uh, the holiday are, are rough for me because there's nothing to do but celebrate, it seems like, and I'm a workaholic, I guess, so not really a workaholic. I just love what I do. Uh, but this morning, what I want to go through, I want to answer a couple of comments uh, to start off with. And I guess the first one uh, uh, comes from a person that uh, asked about um, finding, uh, retailing their cars when they have a wholesale license. And, uh, I want to go a little bit about our uh, the way we operate here uh, with our wholesalers, and all of us are, are wholesalers, and the the dealership to us is a separate entity. It, it it just gives us privileges, but we're running our own business there, and so our arrangement with our dealership here is um, quite simple. Um, they process our paperwork, provide us with temporary tags insurance and uh, uh, collect sales tax. They're our tax agent on the retail sales. And we pay the dealership $200 per transaction. So a lot of you have asked or, or, uh, you know, what, what we you should pay a dealership to process your paperwork. I, you know, that that's, nobody can tell you what you should or should not do or what a dealer should or should not do. They have their own policy, just like we do. But uh, we find that uh, we can maintain a successful uh, program here uh, by charging $200 processing fee. And personally, uh, I'm more than happy to pay that. I pay that $200 processing fee uh, when I'm selling my cars. Uh, every one of our wholesalers pay that processing fee. Uh, because it's strictly a privilege, and that is the only fees that our dealership actually makes uh, our processing fees. So uh, wherever you are in your state, whatever your agreement uh, is uh, with your consigning dealer, it's something that I would probably, it just gives you a starting place. This is in Tennessee, running our dealership based on our overhead on our dealership, uh, based on our uh, growth expectations as far as administration, uh, we're comfortable with the $200 processing fee. Uh, now, some of us look at this and say, okay, well, if I sell 10 cars a month, uh, I'm paying $2,000 a month in processing fees. Well, uh, that is true. Uh, and yes, you can uh, start your own dealership and normally operate uh, pretty close to that $2,000 a month, providing you don't hire any help, uh, that you do everything yourself, uh, which is going to burn you out on trying to run your wholesale business uh, because now you're running a retail dealership. And so uh, that $2,000 a month, that may sound a lot like a lot in processing fees uh, will not cover what it's going to cost you to open your own dealership. So I'm always a firm believer in, uh, you know, I don't care about ownership or anything. I do care about control. Uh, I have control of my business. Uh, nobody has control of my business. I operate it and I choose the vendors that I want to choose for my business. And I chose Auto Wholesale Group as a vendor um, because I, I felt that the processing fees um, were something we could live with. Of course, yes, I did, uh, I was instrumental in creating that, but I set it up to where that any dealer should be happy with that, provided they're not greedy. Uh, so that's the first thing that I wanted to cover. Uh, find you a good retail consigning dealer, uh, build that rapport with that dealer. And the next thing you want to do is you got to uh, process a lot of cars. Uh, 
the guy that comes in here wants to be a wholesaler here, and he wants to process one or two cars a month and throw an extra uh, 400 bucks to the dealership. Uh, while it's appreciated, uh, I don't really put, uh, you know, it's just not enough for us to really concentrate. So I, I'm really one that pushes our wholesalers to do volume. We want more cars going through. Uh, we strive to have volume. I would like to have, my ideal situation is to have um, about 10 wholesalers selling 8 to 10 cars a month uh, and pushing 100 to 120 cars a month over the curb. Uh, those are nice processing fees. The wholesalers are making good money. The dealership is making good money. The administrators that work in the dealership are making good money. And everybody's happy. So that's the uh, example that I can give you as far as what you will pay a, a dealership to process your paper. Uh, the next question that, uh, well, the next thing I'm going to address is I want to share with you. Uh, a lot of people talk about difference in wholesale and retail. There's tremendous advantages and advantages to both of them, and you shouldn't do both of them. Um, and, and I have, again, I refer back to some people will ask, uh, well, how much should I make per car? Uh, your goal should be around uh, $10,000 to $20,000 per car. Now, that sounds ridiculous that you try to make that much money on a car, but I can give you an example of um, we just had a great weekend and the reason for that was was primarily it was still geared because of wholesale and retail. Uh, we had an opportunity, we bought a, uh, and I'll show pictures of it, we bought this uh, uh, Frontier truck and we were able to buy it right. We, we paid exactly what the owner of the vehicle, who was a previous customer, of ours, a retail customer, uh, we paid exactly what this retail customer wanted for his vehicle. He came in to buy a car and happened to mention he wanted to sell this one. So Shane bought the vehicle uh, from him wholesale uh, or from at his asking price. Well, we knew that when Shane bought the car, his mindset was he was going to carry it straight to the auction wholesaling at the auction and make a quick um, few hundred bucks on it. And, and we had a, a very nice wholesale profit made. And to answer the question, a lot of you like to be, you get specific, but I'll just be honest with you. We had uh, about fifteen to $1,600 made on this vehicle in, on a wholesale uh, transaction. But as we picked up the vehicle and Shane and I were uh, riding back together, we decided, and it took a little persuasion, uh, but we decided to uh, take the vehicle back to the lot and give it a few days at, on the retail market. Uh, we had the security of knowing we had fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars wholesale made, uh, but I. I wanted to, I guess, go back and remind Shane of a retail, the same scenario that he had on a, a Lexus a while back, uh, where he had big wholesale money made on it, and he decided to give it a few days to retail. And within that few days to retail the car, he did retail the car in a few days, very few days, and made more than he would have made by, of course, wholesaling the car. But more importantly than that, what he did was since he retailed that car, he made a good, I mean, a great profit off of it. But he has created a customer uh, on that retail side. That, that Those people that he came and bought it have come back and um, uh, bought three more cars, and he's made really good profits on all of those cars. So. Uh, it's been a very good um, deal for him retail uh, that vehicle. So uh, when you get into a situation where you're wondering whether you should 
do. You can take a quick wholesale profit. Yes, you can. But you never forget that you you may be able to expand that profit by, by retailing the car. And so don't immediately jump out and say, okay, well, I've got, uh, I've got a huge wholesale profit here. Uh, and, and go after it. Give it a few days on the retail market. You can always fall back on your wholesale price if you want to. So uh, don't be quick to take the, the fast buck. Uh, work it out on a wholesale and a retail basis. And, and, uh, because when the one is going through, the great thing about wholesale and retail, and especially auctions, uh, they're going to be worth the same amount of money two weeks from now at an auction that they would be worth today. The, the market doesn't change like that at an auction. Uh, so when you find that retail buyer that's willing to pay that price for that car, that's kind of one in a lifetime deal. Uh, the retail buyer, uh, we just caught a situation to where that retail buyer just happened to have had a insurance loss. We just had happened to have had the exact vehicle that this buyer was looking for at the exact right time. And I want to assure you, and as Shane and I agree, we got more for that vehicle than any other place in the world we would have got it. I actually checked uh, the prices of vehicles in, in that price range, and we were in the top seven percent of the country um, as far as how much it sold for the average price of that vehicle uh, was in the low fours actually uh, that was the standard and when you look at your books they'll every book would have given you old average trade-in vehicle average resale price would have been the low fours, and we got in the mid fives for the vehicle because of the right time customer. So when you look at these books and you're trying to judge everything uh, based on a book, uh, that's not going to work. So you got to base it on a customer's individual needs and, and you just got to be in the right place at the right time and never be afraid to ask uh, for the right price.